thousands of dollars and hundreds of miles. That was the distance between me and my dreams. But Army ROTC changed that for me. I've been able to maintain a balanced schedule, train for service, and receive a well-rounded education. All tuition debt free. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we built the truck of the future for everyone. Ford F-150, with best-in-class available towing and payload and an available interior work surface. It's built to work hard and smart. Because the truck of the future isn't built for a few, it's built for America. Ford F-150, drive one today. Now, for a limited time, get over 5,800 total savings on a 2021 F-150, only at your Northland Ford dealers. How did you become the person you are? Was it with the help of others? Was it through opportunities presented to you? If you are like me, the answer to these questions is yes. Someone invested in me, and now it's my turn. My turn. My turn to invest in someone. As you consider how you can make a difference, we invite you to give to the Minnesota FFA Foundation. Your gift will open up a world of opportunities for young people as they develop their leadership skills, grow as a person, and prepare for their future careers. Someone invested in you. Will you invest in someone? The convention will come to order. We are now holding a session of the 92nd Minnesota FFA Convention. Vice President Cianurom, are all officers at their stations? I shall call the roll of officers, determine if they're at their stations, and report back to you, President Olander. The Sentinel. Stationed by the door. Your duties there. Through this door, past many friends of the FFA, it is my duty to see that the door is open to our friends at all times and that they are welcome. I care for the meeting room and paraphernalia. I strive to keep the room comfortable and assist the president in maintaining order. The reporter. The reporter is stationed by the flag. Why by the flag? As the flag covers the United States of America, so I strive to inform the people in order that every man woman, and child may know that the FFA is a national organization that reaches from the state of Alaska to the Virgin Islands and from the state of Maine to Hawaii. The treasurer. Stationed by the emblem of Washington. Your duties there. I keep a record of receipts and disbursements just as Washington kept his farm accounts carefully and accurately. I encourage thrift among the members and strive to build up our financial standings through savings and investments. George Washington was better able to serve our country because he was financially independent. The secretary. Stationed by the ear of corn. Your duties there. I keep an accurate record of all meetings and correspond with other secretaries wherever corn is grown and FFA members meet. The advisor. Here by the owl. Why by the owl? The owl is the time-honored emblem of knowledge and wisdom. Being older than the rest of you, I'm asked to advise you from time to time as the need arises. 
I hope that my advice will always be based upon true knowledge and ripen with wisdom. Madam Vice President, why do you keep a plow at your station? The plow is a symbol of labor and tillage of the soil. Without labor, neither knowledge nor wisdom can accomplish much. My duties require me to assist at all times in directing the work of our organization. I preside over meetings in the absence of our president, whose place is beneath the rising sun. And why is the president so stationed? The rising sun is a token of a new era in agriculture. If we will follow the leadership of our president, we shall be led out of the darkness of selfishness and into the glorious sunlight of brotherhood and cooperation. President Olander, all officers are at their stations. Thank you, Vice President Sianyurom. The secretary will call the roll of members. I am pleased to announce that there are numerous FFA members, numerous alumni members, and many guests present, President Olander. Thank you. FFA members, why are we here? To, to practice, practice brotherhood, brotherhood, honor agricultural opportunities and responsibilities, and develop those qualities of leadership which, which an FFA, FFA member should possess. May we accomplish our purposes. I now declare this session of the Minnesota FFA Convention duly open for the transaction of business or attention to any matter which may properly be presented. Members and guests, welcome to the last day of convention. I sure am ready to celebrate. And hey, Elena, in honor of the last day that we're state officers together, I got you a gift. Oh my gosh, thank you. You know what? I got one for you too. Thanks. All right, all right, you go first. No, you go first. If you say so. All right. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, another, another, okay, another box. We'll see how good my skills are here. All right. Uh, uh huh. Okay, okay, okay. I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, Anna, thank you so much for thinking of me for this gift, but why in the world does this pen look like it's been through 2020 five times? Well, that's my favorite pen. It's been through those long parley practices, all of those last minute homework assignments, and every time my advisor decided that it was his, lost it and found it again. That pen has some serious memories. Well, in that case, I have the perfect spot for it. You go. Uh-huh. Number one, best Anna early. I will, wait a minute. Uh, uh, Elena, what is this? Well, is this a poultry plaque? I can see it through the tape. This is your poultry plaque from 2015? Uh, no, no, no. It's, it's the poultry plaque from 2015. Oh, that's lots of good memories. In all seriousness, though, um, as much as I loved getting that plaque, and trust me, I loved getting that plaque when I was younger, but it's all about the memories that were made and the lessons learned that made the experience behind that plaque worth it. And I know it sounds weird being nostalgic about a pen, but your favorite pen is always there, ready to write down notes or even sign your state degree application. As much as I love that pen and everything it reminds me of, I can only tell it apart from every other single one of those pens that I have because that one's wrapped in duct tape. <laughs> you know, this year's in the future, we might look back on 2020 and 2021 as a year that is distinguished from all the others because sometimes it felt like we were being held together by duct tape. But that doesn't mean that this season won't have special value and meaning to us. In fact, it might even have made it special because it's the year that was held together by duct tape. And of course, the mute button on Zoom. This year has been a lot. <laughs> We've cheered as one of our own won a national proficiency award, and the rest of us watched in a Zoom watch party. 
Elena learned that an engine can basically fall out of her car. We wrote letters to pen pals the old fashioned way and performed random acts of kindness while simultaneously worrying homeowners would consider us a threat when we dropped care packages in their mailboxes. We listened to you wrestle with disappointment and celebrate triumphs. And none of those moments were any less worthy of celebration. All of it mattered. This is all worth it. The world around us has told us this, that all this year that it's wasted, that these opportunities are less meaningful, that we should be angry or feel cheated for having missed out on things that should have been milestones. But did we? The purpose of a milestone is to mark how far that we've traveled. No matter how far you, we go, how long it takes to get there, or who is there to witness it, a milestone showcases progress. This year, we've made progress in predictable ways and in ways that we may not even realize. Maybe FFA was never about the spotlight. Maybe FFA is about directing our focus on things that are deserving of our attention so we don't miss the whole point that those kinds of moments were what was worth it the whole time. There is so much more to the story than an award or a party. Mm -hmm. FFA has value in the moments we often forget to celebrate. But those experiences are the ones that we carry with us into the future. They're the ones that transform communities and value systems. They can shape not only your life, but the lives of your ancestors. The things that can happen without an audience, without a confetti cannon or laser light show, are often the things that become our foundation. Years from now, we will look back at what we did this season of our lives and realize this was really worth it. And it is, because everything is. This is all worth it. But don't just take it from us. What? FFA chapters are rich with tradition that is brought to life in relevant ways. For the Watertown Mayor FFA chapter, one of those traditions is generosity. FFA advisor Nathan Anderson has been with the program since 2019 but the Watertown Mayor FFA Alumni Group has been donating to the Minnesota FFA Foundation since at least the early 90s. That's almost exactly when Mr. Anderson was born. When you start talking about traditions, I always go to Fiddler on the Roof, you know, tradition, tradition. You may ask, how did these traditions get started? I'll tell you. I don't know, but it's a tradition. Communities really value traditions and maintaining those traditions are very important. Watertown Mayor conducts fruit sales every year as our main fundraiser, and that money is used to support many different things, including a yearly donation to the FFA Foundation. The Minnesota FFA Foundation provides programs that give back to local chapters in a variety of ways, ranging from supporting this convention to offering scholarships to camps and college, and providing grants to chapters to help them take their program to the next level. But that's not why the Watertown Mayor FFA chapter makes it a priority to give. So I'm a big believer in get what you give. So if you have the ability to give, do so. And then when you need help, someone will be there for you. We choose the FFA Foundation to give our money to because we believe in what they do. Generosity doesn't just show up in how we financially give. We can give our time and talents as well. And Mr. Anderson isn't just keeping up tradition in that realm. He's using his talents to tell the story of life as an agriculture teacher in a way that has made him a star. Well, at least to us. The morning report, fire away. Chimps are going ape, giraffes remain above it all. Elephants remember, though it is what I can't recall. Open up! What's the password? What? No. Open this door! Not even close. Everybody's always talking at me. Everybody's trying to get in my head. So it's important that we get the word about egg education out into the public eye and tell them that we're not just cows, sows, and plows anymore. I try and show what actually goes on in an egg room and what a fun place it can be. And I hope that people can learn from my videos, laugh from my videos, and maybe be inspired to take an egg class and join FFA as well. 
No matter if you're continuing a legacy of charity or owning the fact that your story can be told in a way that serves others, the gifts we have to give are all worth giving. Mary Holes Claus is the Chancellor of the University of Minnesota Crookston and Morris campuses. Her accomplished career started somewhere many of us are very familiar with, the front of an agriculture classroom. Our team is fortunate to have had the opportunity to sit down with Chancellor Holes Claus to get some leadership advice, and she shared our commitment to the idea of this is all worth it. She shared three pieces of advice. First, it's worth it to do the work to master skills you may not be comfortable with because your practice pays off not only for yourself, but in a ripple effect that impacts lives you may not even know about. I was a welding teacher and I hadn't really done that very well at all. So I worked with my husband who was very accomplished to be able to at least get to the place where I could teach my vocational agriculture students about welding. And oftentimes you're going to find things in life, some things are easy and some things are difficult for you. In fact, pretty much anything that requires using a tool is not my forte. But you have to stay with it. Keep practicing. You'll get better. And the reason I'm here is because I want to show you this is a company uh, that makes equipment um, that's incidentally welded, as you see down here, equipment that's uh, exercise equipment. And many of the students who I taught to weld now work for this firm. And so I look at that weld and go, yeah, that's pretty good. They did a pretty excellent job. Uh, obviously, they had a lot more aptitude than I did, but it's about staying with it. Be resilient, be tough, and you'll be surprised at your outcomes. And when I look at those wells and I see these students, I realize that each of us has an impact on other people's lives. Chancellor Holes Claus also shared the value she'd found not only in planning her future, but responding to the accidental opportunities that popped up. You know, you never know exactly where a pathway is going to take you in life. For part of that, I think it's just being open to what might be out there. Like, I never thought I'd end up in higher education. Um, that certainly was not on my agenda, but I ended up getting a job at Iowa State and then saw that I needed, for instance, to continue my education if I was going to continue with that organization. But as I said, sometimes you just don't know where that leadership opportunity is going to come from. And I love people who plan their lives. But for most of us, we plan our lives at accidents rule. Be open to that. Finally, we need to recognize that the impact others make on our behalf is so important. And we need to recognize our lives are profoundly impacted by the people around us. You know, you're here today as an FFA member because many people have invested in you. And I remember oh, probably a long time ago uh, when I was quite young and I had done this amazing presentation and I worked for our Department of Economic Development and I had a whole series of people in the room with me and gave this great presentation. When I got done, this gentleman came up to me who was actually from my hometown and he goes, hey, Mary, that was really good. You had a really good presentation. Aren't you glad that people helped you along the way? And he was referring to my days as 4-H and he was a former 4-H leader, another amazing organization that develops leaders as FFA does. And I just kind of smiled at him. I was like this 20 something and I'm thinking, I smiled and go, oh, thank you so much for your kind comments. And then I'm thinking to myself, oh, he doesn't know. I have worked so hard. I went to school in three and a half years. I really worked hard at these jobs. He doesn't know that how much I've done. And that was nice he said that. And I remember thinking that, well, thank goodness. I had about an hour drive every night home. And it gave me time to reflect on what Harold, this gentleman, had actually said to me. And what he said was so true that many people have invested with you as your leadership and on your leadership journey and have helped you to be successful. So there's one thing I do kind of want you to remember as you grow older through your FFA years and, and later on, and that is to pay it back. 
because individuals have invested in you. Be a mentor when you're maybe in high school or even in college. Be a mentor. Be helpful to others. And always remember, we are really a collective vision of people who believed in us along the way. Thank you, Chancellor Holzclaus, for your leadership, not only from your position with the University of Minnesota, but as an example for each of us to remember that throughout our lives, each of these moments will be worth it. Fillmore County, Minnesota is home to Forestville State Park, the Bike Trail, and Niagara Cave. But it's also home to one of the greatest love stories ever told. No, not that kind of love story. And not just the love of FFA, although that's present too. The kind that leaves a legacy that gets sweeter with every generation. Jerry Tesmer was an FFA member of the Harmony High School chapter from 1965 to 1969. He tried his hand at livestock judging and had an award-winning swine project. He bought a 160-acre farm in Harmony with great ex expectations for what he could accomplish through agriculture. And he raised pigs, sheep, and kids side by side. He taught agriculture for one year as a high school teacher before becoming a University of Minnesota Extension County Agricultural Educator. As time has passed, photos of his experiences have become family heirlooms as his children, Jennifer, Mark, Karen, Sarah, and Gordy joined FFA on their own. They became competitors in their own stories, camp attendees, star green hands, chapter, region, and state officers, and agricultural education majors. His daughter Sarah works to provide $2.5 million worth of support annually to agricultural education programs on all levels as the executive director of one of the most respected agricultural leadership organizations in the state. Jerry passed away in 2015, but his family still gathers together on that farm they were raised on, where now the next generation is continuing some of the best traditions of agricultural life. Morgan Pickett is a junior in the Fillmore Central FFA chapter, considering a career in agricultural education, just like her aunt, just like her grandfather. And while there are a hundred opportunities she can choose from, why wouldn't she? It's a family tradition. There are all kinds of incredible stories that start and continue within the blue corduroy jackets. But as we look at today as an example of this is all worth it, stories like the Tesmer family showcase that we take what FFA gives us and make the most of it, not only for ourselves now, but for our future. And not only for our future, the actions we take now, small improvements, can leave a legacy that paves the way for our families and generations we may not even meet. Our efforts here matter, and we're grateful to be joined by two most recent generations of the Tesmer family FFA members, Sarah Dornick and Morgan Pickett. Thank you for joining us. So, can you share a little bit about the role FFA has played in your family? Sure. Um, FFA has always been something that we've been involved in. My dad was an FFA member in the late 60s at the Harmony FFA chapter. He was the chapter secretary, uh, participated in state band, he was on the judging team, um, and he had a swine project where he was the star chapter farmer and got a state farmer degree. So he was really active and involved. Um, that led to him going into agricultural education. Um, the chapter actually closed for a little bit, but then it uh, opened back up uh, when we consolidated schools with uh, Fountain and Preston, and so it became the Fillmore Central FFA chapter. Um, my sister, her mom, was the second president ever of the Fillmore Central FFA, but actually all five siblings, uh, Tesmer, Tesmer kids, were um, a chapter presidents. Uh, my three of us got state degrees. My sister Karn and I were uh, region officers, and Karn was actually a state sentinel. So um, just really active and involved. And then it was 
been really fun watching Morgan. We were all really excited, trying not to push, but excited when she joined the FFA uh, her freshman year. And it's been great watching her and her niece, or my niece, uh, Katie, get involved in the chapter and, and do all the same things we did and see that kind of historical and memories that they're making. For sure. It really sounds like you have all created a legacy, not only within your family, but also within your region and chapter. So, Sarah, as a student, what were some of your favorite experiences? Oh, as a student, um, I really enjoyed participating um, in the contests, of course. I loved state convention. I, I did landscape horticulture. I liked being a delegate, actually. I was in the state choir. Um, I was also a region officer, um, so getting outside of the community, going um, other places in the region, learning how to give a presentation. Um, also, I, I really enjoyed being in contests. I did the egg sales contest with my sister, and we we did pretty well, but the best was when my advisor would kick me on a team that, you know, we need someone to fill a spot. That happens. And then he, uh, the, the biggest thing was as a catalyst, uh, my senior year of high school, he added me on um, as student advisor. And so that spring semester, I was down in the ag room. I did an independent study as a student advisor. And that really led me to study ag education at the University of Minnesota and kind of put me on my path to my future career. And so now as a, a person, I, I really enjoy the FFA experiences of um, the Ag Policy Experience, which is the conference, and the FFA Day at the Capitol. Uh, those are times I get to interact with students, which are always my favorite, and helping students tell their agricultural education story and, and why they care about FFA. It's always funny how our ag teachers always know just the thing that they have in store for us. Right. So now as a volunteer, what have some of your favorite experiences been? So I, again, that's probably my favorite is that that egg policy experience has really been my favorite and then uh, the FFA day. But just anytime you see students, you know, state fair, state convention, national convention, you just see the engagement they have, the enthusiasm for all the activities and, and um, celebrating their successes and even some of the, the tears, you know, you know how hard they worked in the heartbreak and uh, just being a part of it all, is, it's just making memories. Absolutely. Now over to Morgan. What have your experiences been with an FFA that have really been your favorite? Uh, my favorite experiences have been the camps. I think of it as like a little vacation. I love meeting new FFAers and just gaining the experiences from them. For sure. The people you meet are one in a million, especially in the blue jacket. I, I know I've made so many people inside and out of this jacket that are just my best friends now, so I 100% agree. So as a recent participant in our Ag Policy Experience this year, what really motivated you to take advantage of that opportunity? Um, I have some upperclassmen in my school that attended last year, and they begged me. They're like, this is such a great way to learn about Ag Policy. And of course, when you have an aunt that runs the whole thing, it's kind of a sole uh, thought. <laughs> and that's what motivated me. I learned so many new things, and I'm grateful for the experience. Absolutely. Well, you're lucky you have some family connection here to yeah. give you that little push <laughs> just when you need it. So just earlier this week, Sarah, we learned that you um, have been inducted into the Minnesota FFA Hall of Fame. It's very clear that FFA is a huge part of your history. But looking back and looking forward, what do you think your dad and your grandpa would think about the decision you made to join FFA generations ago? I think my dad would be really proud. Um, I know he is proud of all the activities that we were, you know, the successes we had in the FFA, and, and he'd be tickled seeing um, the, the grandkids also participating. I think he's really proud um, that we chose careers based on those experiences to help others. Um, I work in government and education. My sister is also an informal educator. My other sister works in the medical field. I have a brother in the hospitality industry, and my, my youngest brother is in the United States Air Force. And so I think... Um, Living a life of service is my dad's true legacy, and that would be what he's most proud of. Well, I'm glad to see that he's instilled that in all of the generations to come. Thank you all so much for your time today and for your contributions in the moments that we haven't seen or celebrated. This week, this year, has made it so clear that this is all worth it. No matter if your story looks like Sarah's or Morgan's, or if you're a first year, first generation FFA member, 
No matter if you want to teach or if you want to become a physician or an executive or to start your own business, it's worth it. Dr. Zane Sheehan is the Minnesota FFA State Advisor and Agricultural Education's biggest advocate in the Minnesota Department of Education. Over the last year, he's been instrumental in helping to shape guidelines for safe school instruction to guide agricultural pro programs through program approval and to help support several brand new chapters. Just to name a few things, it's clear he cares deeply about students and agricultural education and his time this year has made a significant difference in our ability to navigate and move past this pandemic. Let's welcome Dr. Sheehan for his annual Advisors Challenge. Hello and welcome to the Minnesota FFA State Convention and greetings from the Minnesota Department of Education. I'm Dr. Zane Sheehan. I'm the State Supervisor of Agricultural Education and your Minnesota FFA State Advisor. I wanted to provide a few moments to say thank you and welcome you all to the convention and also bring a challenge for our coming year. This has been a pretty difficult year as we've heard many times from our teachers and guests here during this convention, but it's also brought about great change. This has been a huge year of growth for the Minnesota FFA Association. In terms of agriculture programs, which are the backbone of FFA and our chapters across the state, we've grown significantly across the state. This year, we have 291 teachers, which meant 50 teachers changed programs last year, and there were 17 additions across the state. We have 209 agriculture programs now, which is significant growth from past years. That equals 35,000 students who have the opportunity to learn about food, natural resources, fiber, and agriculture in their classrooms. That's a total of 14 new AFNR programs that opened this past year, and we know that's gonna continue to grow next year, specifically in the metro area. But that also led to new FFA chapters as well. For the longest time, we sat around 185 chapters, pretty stuck in our growth. This year changed. We now have 191 chapters, that's nine new schools total, and we have 11,000 FFA members growth during a difficult time like COVID. That's exceptional and really, really exciting for the future of AGAD and FFA in our state. We've done some really great things this year as we challenge ourselves to become stronger and grow. The FFA affiliation program challenges us to provide FFA to all students in our programs. In that model, students no longer choose to join FFA and pay a fee to become a member. Instead, the opportunities of FFA are provided to all students in the program the day they step foot into the classroom. We've had several new programs explore FFA affiliation, which has helped with our growth. We've also doubled down on our focus on SAE and work-based learning. We know that for students to have a true ag ed experience, they need to be in the classroom, have participation and opportunities for leadership in FFA, and to bring their classroom learning alive with technical skill development and an SAE. We've provided AET opportunities, the record keeping program that we use to every single school in the state, and we've seen huge growth in the number of students who have SAE, even during times like COVID, where it was difficult and challenging to work. So we're excited about the great things that we've accomplished. So what does that mean? I think it's really important that we take time to be proud of the work that we've done. We've heard a lot this past year that agriculture is an essential industry, that it's so important to provide food to people, but agriculture isn't always looked upon with the same strength uh, from the general public that we view it as within our area. So thank you for all of, the, all of you and everyone across the state who works to provide food, um, farms our land, works on our natural resources, and provided the energy and resources that we needed to keep the state alive. Now, Minnesota's recovered faster than other states have. We initial thought, initially thought there would be a huge recession and it would take us a long time as a state to come back. Now, we've seen growth as our state's recovered quickly, and I think that has a lot to do with our, Ameri our Minnesota agriculturalists across the state. So thank you for those of us who work in farming and agriculture. Now, we've also realized that it took a lot of work of our chapter leaders and our regional leaders to keep these programs going. I'm so thankful for each of the FFA officers and chapter leaders at a local level who worked with your members to provide them opportunities to stay engaged, especially when that wasn't always fun to sit in front of a computer for hours and hours on a day. So thank you for all the Twitter chat sessions, Zoom meetings, and conferences that we put on virtually. I'm also really excited about our CDE and LDE participation. Our members doubled down on CDE and LDE events. We made sure that we were learning and striving to grow so that we can meet those future demands of agriculture and in industry. 
So thank you for all the conferences, the virtual CDEs and LDEs, and all the service projects that our chapters did across the state to remind our schools, our communities, and even the state that FFA is the future of agriculture. So now what? Where do we go from here? It's not gonna be easy to recover from this time where schools were virtual for a year and a half. And so it's gonna take us a while to rebuild. And I think FFA is the perfect place to accomplish that. So as we start looking at rebuilding, holding our chapter officer retreats for the first time in a long time, holding local FFA programs and small gatherings, start to think about what are the types of events that you can do to have people gather safely and in a way that makes a big impact. So rebuild, recover, and that's gonna take place slowly. We're gonna work with our regions a lot this past year to make sure that we can provide programs and events to you locally and start building up towards our state events so that we can hold them in a safe way. We also need to be focused on equity. How can we provide leadership to all of our students in all of our programs, specifically groups of students that may not have always been represented in agriculture in the past? So as we continue to grow, look for who are the students who maybe didn't have a place at the table and how can we help invite them in to lead? And finally, let's continue this growth. We broke that 10,000 member mark and we're at 11,000 now and we've launched new chapters. We know more and more programs are coming on board next year. So how can we help reach out to our friends and other communities that don't have ag ed? How can we invite more students to join FFA, particularly even looking at the affiliation model where every student gets those opportunities? And how can we continue to spread our ag ed classes so that more students realize the importance of agriculture in their lives and that there's valuable and high paying jobs for them in the future if they look at ag? I'm so proud of the work that we've all done. I hope that you're proud of the work that you did because this was a difficult year and it wouldn't have been possible without our local and regional leaders and our state officers here leading FFA. So thank you, have a great convention. I, I bring greetings from the Department of Ed who knows that FFA is the leaders and they always recognize our jackets and I'm excited for the, the remainder of our convention this week. Thank you, Dr. Sheehan for your leadership over the last year. With projects like the implementation of statewide SAE record keeping, pursuit of research and collaborative grants, and efforts to strengthen agriculture education programs throughout Minnesota, you truly have focused on a wise use of your time to impact so many things that have value to Minnesota FFA. Next, let's welcome Allie and Izzy Olander and Mr. Ramstead to introduce our final keynote of convention. Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm Izzy. And we have had the challenging privilege of growing up with our older brother, Ben. Ben, ben is the kind of brother who always meant what he said and put his words into his actions. He was never afraid to put in long hours and would never expect us to do anything that he was not willing to do himself. Unless, of course, that is drinking a lot of Mountain Dew. I've seen my brother work hard, I've seen him struggle, and I have seen him overcome challenges. This year, FN was not doing anything work-related. He was either working or doing something on the farm to help our dad. He is the person and FFA member that so many can look up to, not because he leads with words, but because his actions set integrity as an example to follow. Ben is the oldest, and somehow he got all the hygienes in the family. This year has been a shift in his example, as he is not with us as much but he's always looking out for us, whether that be through watching basketball games online or giving us hints and encouraging us to get involved in FFA, Ben is a brother we want to follow because we know he genuinely cares, even though he has tough love every once in a while. This is who Ben is as a state officer as well. With the help of a wicked work ethic, a weird sense of humor, and help from plenty of sugar, he has put Minnesota FFA first this year. I am proud to know him and to be one of the members of Minnesota FFA that he always held higher than himself, no matter what the obstacle that he faced this year. Ben never settles with enough. From coming in extra early before or after school to make his welding projects look top notch, to serving as a mentor to younger FFA members and inspiring them to serve more and give more. As one of Ben's egg teachers, it's been exciting and fulfilling to see him take his passion for agriculture and fuel that with purpose through serving and helping grow those around him. Now to share his retiring address titled, From Passion to Purpose, your 2020-2021 Minnesota State FFA President, Mr. Ben Olander.
When I was in second grade, I roamed the safari, seeing the world from a new dimension because I was as tall as the sky with incredibly long, wobbly legs. Legs that conveniently would allow me to run swiftly up to my neighbor's porch to get a bucket full of candy. Seven-year-old Ben had a lot going for him in his life, not the least of which was a good track record for amazing Halloween costumes. When I wore my costumes, I wore them with pride and style. I was never going to fully achieve the meaning of the costume if I did not feel it in my heart. I was not dressed like a giraffe. I was a giraffe. At least until the end of the night, then I was a guy who needed to get that costume off, go to the bathroom, and figure out how much candy I could get my parents to let me eat that night, just in that order. While I one time felt that I was a giraffe roaming the safari, I, Ben Olander, am not actually a giraffe. I mean, look at me. This does not mean the feeling I had was never there, yet it was a short, one-time passion I aspired to be. We might all have our own costume moments, but here is something to think about. Instead of dressing up in a costume we wish to be, we wear our passions every day to define who we are to be. Passions come from anywhere and can be anything. Whether it is playing an instrument or building projects for those in your community, those passions are yours and throughout your life, they shape your purpose in each moment. A few years ago, I tried to fit back into that original costume giraffe and let's just say it was a little snug. No matter how much I had committed to my destiny as second grade giraffe, my passion was not enough to make it fit the moment. We might all have our own costume experiences, but here's something we need to think about. Instead of dressing up in a costume to pretend to be something, we wear our passions every day to actually be something. Passion is something we all look at differently. There are many definitions, and sometimes we underestimate how important passion is because it can tempor be temporary or seasonal, like my giraffe enthusiasm, or it can be lifelong. To me, passion is where we find dedication and enthusiasm in the everyday moments. Passion is something we care enough about that it motivates us to share, to act, or to lead. Each of us has at least one passion that has the potential to go far beyond the surface. Each and every one of us has something in our heart that we are called to be and do. For some, that is staying active through your athletic competitions and committing valuable time all year long to train and be ready for the season. For others, it is committing time and energy to serve those in their community. Some people desire to simply help those around them with schoolwork. We each have an interest, something that brings light in the dark moments and passes time like there's absolutely no tomorrow. These passions can serve a greater purpose than just being something we enjoy. They can give us strength, determination, and moments of joy no matter what else we are in the middle of. This process of uncovering your passion is an ever-evolving and worthy cause for each of us to embrace. Where can our passions lead us and how can we make them more purposeful? Well, let me tell you a bit about my agriculture education teacher. My teacher grew up loving agriculture and the outdoors, so it seemed like a natural fit for him to pursue an egg business as career. He was following his passion. In the middle of his college career, after studying egg business, Mr. Lingren had a professor reach out to him and asked if he would consider teaching as a career. This was something Mr. Lingren had never experienced, but someone was able to help him discover his passion of empowering others. So he decided to try it, not just for one year, but for his entire career, two of which I was unfortunate enough to call Mr. Lingren my agriculture education teacher. Every single day I would go to class, he was there, being his humorous, wise, and passionate self. He worked diligently to make sure that every single student in every class knew that they were valued. It blew my mind to know that this man, who was so great at teaching, hadn't originally even considered a career as a teacher. He'd wanted to do something else. Did he miss out on his calling by changing his path? 
or did he get lucky and discover his real purpose when he changed directions? A purpose is not a specific job or a big loud voice talking about what we are called to do. Purpose is simply when we take what we are passionate about and use it to make a difference in the lives around us. It's that simple. So my teacher fulfilled his purpose in that season of life as the best teacher I ever had. But when my teacher retired two years ago, his purpose didn't stop there. Instead, he applied his passion to serve the world in a different way. You see, every one of us has this ability to find our purpose through their passions. Sometimes, in the case of Mr. Lindgren, we know what our passions are, but we do not know how that passion will lead to developing ourselves towards our purpose. Whether you have the opportunity to make an impact on thousands of students throughout your career, or you have the opportunity to build a lasting friendship with just one person, the impact we have on those people through our passions can be difficult to predict, but this doesn't mean it is any less rewarding. Just because it is challenging doesn't mean that we should quit on this interest and this desire. It simply means there is more work to be done to fulfill that purpose, which is made possibly by our passion. One of the things Mr. Lindgren always gave us as students was a love for the outdoors. I get a lot of peace standing by a body of water when it is calm and the frogs are chirping. At the edge of the shoreline, I find a flat or round rock to skip across the water. There's just some sort of satisfaction watching that rock as it glides across the water and loses its momentum and slowly sinks into the lake where it finds its new home. What I find fascinating about that one rock is the effect it has on the rest of the lake. If I throw a rock straight up in the air, it creates giant ripples. If I skip it across the water, it creates lots of ripples. And if I throw a small rock straight up in the air, it will create small ripples. Whether the rock, when the rock has disappeared out of sight, no matter how I throw the rock or how big that rock is, the ripples it leaves on that still water takes time to disappear to the shorelines. I see that rock as our passions and how we throw that rock is our purpose. When the rock disappears below the surface, no matter what our purpose is, the ripples remain on that surface. For me, those ripples are the influence our passions can have. No matter the size of the rock, what its shape is, or how good of a throw it is across the lake, there are always ripples. Sometimes it is difficult to see the influence we have on those around us. Just as the rock is never able to see the ripples it leaves on the lake, but that doesn't mean it is any less valuable. When we learn what our passions are, we are better suited to find the direction within our life. We can use our passions to live our lives purposefully, and we can recognize the influence we can uncover through the influence we have on others. That influence, no matter how big or small, ripples across the landscape around us. How are you going to use your passions to discover your purpose in life? Many of us are still discovering our passions and learning how we can use them to serve others. I know I am. Maybe your passions will align with the job even if you didn't realize it, like Mr. Lindgren. Maybe your passions don't really relate to a job at all, but it helps you connect to others or manage stress or make a difference for people or resources in your community. My giraffe costume propelled me to live my life with a little more enthusiasm and commitment and gave me my first understanding of my passions. But I want to be the kind of person who lives passionately 365 days a year, not just on special occasions. I believe the world can be a better place when it is filled with people who purposely use their passions to positively influence others. So how will you direct your passions into purpose to influence others? Do your passions influence the world around us? Because it matters that they do. Because when we connect the passions to purpose, that's when we create an influence that's worth it. Ben, you bring humility, joy, and laughter, and understanding to every conversation, and an extreme drive and work ethic to go along with it. Now, we don't know if that drive is from your passions or from Mountain Dew, but 
Either way, it has shown very vividly that this past year, you care for so much about what you do. Speaking of that, no matter what the task is, you will always try your hardest to make an experience that everyone will enjoy. Up to and including wearing a draft onesie during this speech. You put up with us strong female leaders since minute one, and I'm so glad that you were the one to complete our team. On behalf of Lainey, Elena, Emily, and myself, thank you for making this year worth it. Minnesota FFA, your state president, Ben Olander. Uh, Anna, I don't know where the rest of the cupcakes went, but there's only one left. But you have it. I want you to have it. I don't want it. No, I insist. I insist you have it. Let's just half it. Sounds good. Well, well, there's only one cupcake left, and it's against Minnesotan rules to eat the last cupcake. There are still so many more convention goodies that you at home can dig into. It may be the final day of convention, but it is still convention, and there is so much to look forward to that is unique to today. This afternoon, we'll learn state finals results in a live session where we'll learn the winners of each of our competitions this week and meet the new state officer team. But there's still more to get out of convention before it's gone. Be sure to celebrate Plant Systems SAE winners, meet state officer candidates and nominating committee members, and check out the final group of CDE and LDE qualifiers on demand. Today, let's also acknowledge the gifts that we are given by those that empower and support us, whether they are our mentors, our family members, or teachers. Join our team in intentionally letting these people know just how much of a difference they've made this year. Finally, bring today to life. Celebrate what every gift each member of your chapter brings to the table and the resilience and leadership you've seen. Whether it's hosting a chapter potluck, crafting messages of gratitude, or setting optimistic intentions for the next year, don't forget that you get to include today in what is all worth it. And we'll have one last prize available for fully taking advantage of today and all week. Both an individual and a chapter will win scholarships to a camp session of their choice this summer from the entries received by 5 p.m. today. FFA is a place we come to find belonging, growth, and achievement. We can't deny that this, year, this year's challenges have been a central part of our story, but we have the ability to lead ourselves and our world when we choose to focus on what is valuable instead of what is difficult. This is all worth it, and we've seen evidence of that all year long. And we can't wait to celebrate with you today. Secretary Swears, do you have a record of any further business that should now be transacted? I have none. President Olander. We're about to adjourn this session of the 2021 Minnesota FFA Convention. As we mingle with others, let us be diligent at labor, just in our dealings, courteous to everyone, and above all, honest and fair in the game of life. FFA members and guests, join me in a salute to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I now declare this session adjourned.